couple of quick announcements. Yeah, we've got the agenda for Tri-Council. Some of you I know can make it and some can't. Really, the only dress-up day that I see is we've got a reception tomorrow evening. Choda, then uh, Wednesday is the uh, uh, arts and crafts afternoon. If you want to play golf, you can come out there at Cherokee Springs. And then what we have is Thursday is the big tour there at the, the Bison. We go see the Bison, have Buffalo Burger, right? And the museum. Okay, in the museum. Then Thursday evening is pretty much we've got a, a gospel singing and yeah, something else. Okay. Okay. Wednesday at the Heritage Center is the big culture meal there. Yeah. Bring your own fork and bring something, a uh, napkin to wipe your oily mouth. Uh, and we're having fish and Yeah. Friday, if you can, whatever this means to you, dress traditional, but no loincloths and no none of that stuff. Daryl Egg. Okay. Yeah. You will be censored if you come that way. But in ribbon shirts, guys, if you have it. That goes for you, Joe, dear. All right. Having said that, Canaan, how about those list, huh? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord, and uh, we thank you for this uh, opportunity to meet together to discuss uh, our nation and our citizens. Lord, we ask that you would help us to do what's best for them, best for the Cherokee Nation. We thank you for all the blessings you've given us individually and as a, as a people and as a nation. We love you. We give you all the glory and praise. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, roll call, Shelly. Yes, sir. Keith Austin. <coughs> Harley Buzzard. Yeah. Joe Bird. Honey. Julia Coates. Here. Sean Crittenden. Here. Joe Deere. Here. Mike Dobbins. Here. Kanan Duncan. Honey. Rex Jordan. Daryl Legg. Here. Wes Snowfire. Here. Dora Patskowski. Here. Mike Shambaugh. Here. Mary Bakershaw. Honey. E.O. Smith. Here. Janice Taylor. Here. Victoria Vasquez. Here. We have a quorum. Okay, thank you, Shelley. The minutes from LT at this time I entertain a motion to approve. Yes, I'm Councillor Baker Shaw. Yes, uh, on uh, an afternoon legislative act 17 that's going to authorize the comprehensive law of property budget act. Uh, I would like to move that the legislative act. I didn't understand the yes or no at the time of the question, and I'm also an opposed. If that I'll, could be added to the minutes. I'll let Shelley address that. Okay. Under advisement. Okay. All right. Uh, where was I? Okay, we got a motion and a second. Approve the minutes. All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed, ayes have it. Um, <clears throat> we're going to do the State of the Nation. Uh, we, we, uh, we have the Cherokee Warrior Veterans Awards, but that is not something that's going to take place. If you guys don't mind, we will, we will allow the interns to introduce themselves right after the State of the Nation. Is that okay with the council? Okay. All right. Our State of the Nation, our Principal Chief, Chuck Hoskins, Jr. Mr. Speaker, members of the Council, good to be with you again. And in celebration of this room being 100% vaccinated, I'll join you and take my mask off. But it's good to, good to be with everyone again as you do the uh, important work of the Cherokee people. It's a big week, Mr. Speaker, and Council members with uh, Tri-Council being in town. It's also a big week with respect to the Gadugi portal, as we have seen a significant number of citizens access the portal, set up profiles, apply for the COVID assistance. Uh, 195,000 citizens have registered so far on the portal, approximately. 190,000 have applied for assistance, the $2,000 assistance. So that's a huge number, uh, considering uh, the entire population. We still have more to go, but that's a big number of people that accessed it really on the internet, on their own, or with the help of friends or family, or in many cases, council members. Today was the first field event that we had, and we have many more of those scheduled, uh, 13 in fact, in total through the end of the month. I think in Venita today, there were somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 people. Of course, these are designed to uh, assist elders and others who lack uh, internet access, lack connectivity, lack access to the technology to sign up. But I feel like we're on pace uh, to help a lot of citizens. Uh, we have uh, had the goal of getting the payments out within approximately a month 
of the application being completed. So we're nearing that uh, first batch of checks to come out, and we'll provide some updates as those go out. Of course, the next step will be a, an email that applicants will receive, which will indicate to them that they've been approved and give them the selection between uh, a paper check and electronic check. And one more thing, Mr. Speaker, on that note, uh, there was a request, I think it came from both at-large council members, that we do some sort of mailer to those who have not yet accessed the portal, and we are doing that. I think we should have that out by the end of the week. So this will really get to not just at-large citizens, but people who just haven't accessed it yet, and it will give them uh, some additional information about it, because many people are not connected on social media, where we primarily uh, publicize this. Uh, we continue to uh, seize the opportunity uh, put before us because of McGirt, and I'm proud of the Attorney General's Office and the Marshal Service, all the men and women involved in helping us build the largest criminal justice system in the state of Oklahoma other than the state of Oklahoma. And Mr. Speaker, the thousandth, thousandth case was filed recently in Cherokee Nation District Court. That is a major milestone when you consider that. That blows away by a couple of hundred of what we've done in the entire last decade of our court system. Only here in the past couple of months have we generated that many cases, and I think things uh, are going smoothly, but we all need to acknowledge that this is a big undertaking, and there will be, there will be difficulties from time to time as we, again, undertake something that uh, in our modern history we've not had to do, but I'm proud of the people that are doing it, and I appreciate the support of the council, both in uh, amending laws and in providing resources, because we couldn't do this without uh, the needed changes in laws, including one that you'll have on your agenda today, and the budgets that you put forward to allow us to do what we need to do. Uh, recently assigned an executive order concerning mental wellness among our workforce, giving them two additional hours a month uh, to really get away from the office, to uh, center themselves spiritually, physically, uh, get uh, some restoration in terms of their mental health. Uh, we're coupling that with uh, a goal of getting walking trails to as many of our work sites across the Cherokee Nation as we can. Of course, the public will largely have access to these work sites. I mean, for example, I was in Muskogee uh, with Councillor Dobbins not too long ago, and we both saw uh, employees of the health center walking around, didn't we, didn't we Doc, uh, around the health center. That's an area where if we had a walking trail, I think we could encourage more people to do that. Uh, and if we can do that across the reservation, I think we can do something for both physical well-being uh, and I think mental well-being as well. That is all part of an initiative that I think we all care about. Uh, one other aspect of that initiative in terms of walking trail is right here, Mr. Speaker, uh, on our campus is the Conrad Holmes Walking Trail, which was dedicated some time ago, years ago, but over the years the trail has been interrupted by construction, uh, not used as much as I think we'd like it to, so we've rededicated that trail really as a kickoff for this, uh, this really system of trails that uh, we're talking about. Um, Mr. Speaker, that concludes my State of the Nation. I think we are in a position of strength, I think in large measure because of the work of this council. Thank you very much, Widow. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> Good report. At this time, uh, we have unfinished business, committee reports, uh, we'll go ahead and drop down and let our CEO speak before we take care of the interns. We're going to yield to our CEO. Mr. Chuck Garrett, ready? Yes, sir. Good to be with each of you this evening. I uh, appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to address you and update you on uh, your businesses. And uh, I'm pleased to report that uh, we are uh, continuing our progress, uh, recovery from pan the pandemic, uh, each of our business units is running very, very strong right now. I uh, appreciate the work that uh, our uh, my colleagues at Cherokee Federal are doing right now uh, to serve the various federal agencies that uh, we we are honored to have as clients. Um, as you all know, uh, at our gaming business, our Cherokee Nation Entertainment, uh, we are continuing to uh, loosen. Uh, various restrictions uh, to reflect the um, reduced caseloads uh, of COVID-19 in, in Oklahoma, in particular Northeast Oklahoma. Uh, we are, are back to dancing and smoking. Uh, I, I know uh, 
the dancing is uh, widely embraced. Uh, you know, the, the smoking is a double edged sword, uh, but uh, we did uh, hear um, and pay attention as we always do to feedback from from our customers. And uh, and that was a decision uh, that we made uh, to further open our uh, our uh, or loosen our restrictions. Uh, I think the evidence is is pretty strong that that was the right decision for our businesses at this point uh the uh the response has been very strong by our customer base so uh we'll continue monitoring things and uh be prepared to uh uh tighten when necessary if necessary uh, but we're also lifting our travel restrictions to other parts of our business we've been very conservative in terms of uh, uh, allowing and authorizing travel for various corporate reasons. So we'll, we'll, uh, we've loosened that. Uh, we are authorizing uh, folks to, to, to attend meetings and, and various uh, appropriate conferences. Um, and uh, again, we'll monitor that as, as we go forward. Uh, our, just a couple of cultural notes that I wanted to, to add uh, our Cherokee Nation uh, film office uh, is is uh, partnering with the state's largest uh, film festival, uh, Dead Center Film, in Oklahoma City to recognize indigenous filmmakers at the uh, festival's inaugural uh, award for best indigenous short film. So this past weekend marked the the 21st annual uh, Dead Center Film Festival, and uh, the uh, Native filmmakers. Uh, uh, competed for a thousand dollar prize and and uh, it was uh, quite a uh, quite a fun event and I think getting some exposure to some uh, indigenous and native uh, filmmakers that uh, have uh, not had a platform to to really show their uh, their craft so we're, we're we're very excited to to sponsor that and to help um, promote uh, native filmmaking. Uh, the Cherokee Nation uh, Cultural Tourism Team is currently presenting a, a two-part uh, exhibit highlighting uh, the progression uh, of the Cherokee language by allowing visitors to experience the development of the syllabary into the digital age. So the uh, Cherokee Nation Supreme Court Museum is hosting uh, uh, From Talking Leaves to Pixels, uh, The Origins of the Syllabary and Early Printing. Uh, and this this uh, uh, presentation uh, narrates an introduction of the syllabary by Squaya in 1821, as well as the creation of the printing press typeset and publication of the Cherokee Phoenix. Uh, the story continues uh, just a block away uh, at the Cherokee Nation Prison Museum, uh, from talking leaves to pixels uh, and the Cherokee syllabary in the 20th century and beyond which highlights the efforts to adapt the syllabary to our ever-changing technology. So it's a very uh, interesting and, 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 uh, and fun exhibit. If you will uh, get a chance, I'd recommend it uh, to you. And uh, Mr. Speaker, that concludes my report. Happy to answer any questions that the council might have. Any questions for our CEO? Yes, Councilor Austin. Uh, not really a question, uh, Mr. Garrett, but more I wanted to share something. I was at the uh, CNB board meeting the other day, and um, I shared with the, the members who were there a, a little story about an encounter I had with a uh, Cherokee citizen in the last few weeks. And uh, I think it's so important for us to remember Ch Cherokee Nation business serves a very important purpose. It's to bring resources to the Cherokee Nation and its people, but it also provides great opportunities for Cherokee people. Uh, there was a, a, a dear constituent who uh, lives in the Claremore community who uh, I encountered, and she was practically emotional telling me about the her opportunity that CNB offered her. She started t over 10 years ago with CNB in the manufacturing plant in Pryor, and she's risen throughout her career to the point to where she's able to provide her home, her children a very 
comfortable home. She's able to, to know that she has a secure future doing the good work of her tribe that helps her tribe. And she has such tremendous uh, pride in what she's able to do for herself and her community as a Cherokee person that, that uh, it just highlights that Cherokee Nation business is not just a place that makes money. It's a place that makes lives. Thank you very much for, for that comment and, and telling that story. It, it, uh, we appreciated you sharing that with the board the other day. And, you know, it's, it's my, of course, my honor and privilege to, to work with, uh, besides uh, uh, our, so many of people that have made their career at CMB. And, and you're right, it's changed so many families' lives, and, and uh, it's, a, it's a real honor. So thank you for that. Anybody else? Councilor Shaw. <clears throat> Thank you. Hi, Chuck. Chuck, uh, Hi, is are we paying the same hourly wage that the other casinos and tribes are paying their employees in the uh, Tulsa area? You know, it depends on on the position. Uh, we we have a, Cherokee Nation has an eleven dollar uh, an hour minimum wage uh, law, and uh, then. From that, it really depends on the position. You know, we we have uh, constantly reviewing uh, how competitive we are in the market with other casinos uh, and other, not just casinos, but other employers. And so uh, depending on the position, uh, you know, it, there may be some variation either above or, or below, but um, you know, Businesses depend on great people, and it's our it's our competitive advantage to be able to hire the best and brightest people we can. And you can't do that if you're paying subpar wages. That that we know. And uh, so I, I hope I answer your question. But I can tell you that we we monitor the wages and and other factors, including our benefits, which I think most of you all. No, and hopefully you hear from some of your constituents how how competitive and, and favorable those benefits are. But um, we were uh, we follow the Cherokee Nation minimum wage, and then we we work on a on a market basis after that. Okay, and then my last question: uh, With the unemployment benefits about to stop, do you expect an influx of our former employees wanting to come back? I hope so. <laughs> I really do. Uh, you know, it's been a it's been an, an odd situation, and as you recall, back during the pandemic, when there was a six hundred dollar uh, uh, a week uh, premium, uh, we worked closely with our uh, employees to uh, work through a part time furlough if that's what they wanted. If they were above a certain wage or below a certain wage threshold. It could really benefit the, the families. And, and so we worked hard uh, with them to, to coordinate the best outcome. We, we hope that, uh, that uh, you know, that our employees look forward to coming back, those that aren't already back. And uh, so we'll, 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 we'll hope for the best there. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else for our CEO? Uh, one quick note. I had a, an opportunity to, uh, to tour the National Marshall Museum in Fort Smith, Arkansas. They unveiled a statue of, uh, that, that, that reflects the five tribes, Marshall, a Cherokee or Native American Marshall. It's about 10 feet high, and it is done by one of our artists. Uh, is it National Treasure, Daniel Horsechief? Is he a National Treasure? Awesome piece of work, but it's it's there in that National Marshall Museum. It is a site. It, it is really something to see. But uh, but the tourism group, uh, I like to have Molly and Travis and them go visit that sometime and do a little input on the narrative they they need to go around that statue and tell a story. It's it, it's pretty awesome, Chuck. So uh, I just thought I'd share that information with you. Yeah, thank you. I look forward to seeing it. I'll, I'll pass that along to, to Molly and Travis, too, and I'm sure they'll love to have some input there. So. Okay. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Anybody else? Good report, my friend. Thank you. Have a good evening. Have a good evening.
All right. What I'm going to do is have uh, Councilor Shambaugh make a motion to amend the agenda to add items number 9 and 10 from the Community Service Committee. But before we address these items, I'm going to have the, 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 uh, the interns come in and address and, and give uh, a little bit of information who they are because I see them squirming. It's like they're shooting a free throw with no time left on the clock, and we need to go ahead and let them introduce themselves and move them on. So, Councilor Shemba. I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda to include items 9 and 10 to the agenda tonight. Got a motion. Got a second. Discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. So we will add items number 9 and 10 that were handed to you, but this time we're going to turn it over to Mr. George Roach, who always does an outstanding job in bringing in some, some good interns to the Cherokee Nation. All right, Mr. Roach, you're up. Can you hear me? Okay, great. Well, seal on the God, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Speaker Burton, Council, I'd like to uh, thank you for allowing us to come in. Uh, you see there's 10 interns back here, and they're going to come up shortly and introduce themselves. But I'd like to say uh, these are all talented young tribal leaders. We'd like to uh, let you know that they're coming from all over the community. And they are participating in our Summer Youth Leadership Intern Program and the Career Services. Uh, as you guys probably already know, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about our internship program. Uh, you must be 18 to 21 years old, have to be a tribal member, and live within the community or our reservation. Uh, it's been going on since 19, probably around 85, and I've had the fortune of been doing it since close to 2000. So this is probably around my 20th year doing this. I love this program, it's deep in my heart, and uh, I'm glad that these guys are here. Uh, I say 10, but there is only nine. I just got word from one of them. She took her second COVID shot today, and she is definitely ill. Uh, took it this morning, and she could not make it in. She's running temperature, and they're really watching her. So um, uh, keep your prayers for her, okay? So if, that's all I have, and if you have any questions, uh, please ask, and uh, I'd like to bring them in one at a time. Are you going to introduce them? They're going to introduce themselves. I would like for them to introduce them. All right. Ready. Oh, see you, Nigada. See you. Los Tawado, Talsko, Yawada, Tiad, Stairwell, Ginella, T.U. Digade, Lakwaski. Hello, everyone. My name is Emily Baldridge. I am from District 8. I am 20 years old. I graduated from Stillwell, or I'm sorry, Sequoia High School up the road. I am from Stillwell, though. And I am currently a junior at the University of Tulsa, where I am studying computer simulation and gaming design. What else? Mm. Fortunately, Mr. Legg, um, we got the okay last week. So we're going. Could we have them tell where they're interning in the tribe? I would be curious to know that also. I'm talking about their work site? Yes, okay. Let them know where your work's out there. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Deja Dowdo, how are you all? If you're all right, that's all right. If not, yeah, I ain't blame you. But um, I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I graduated from Union. Um, I'm, I'm studying at OSUIT in Okmulgee, and my uh, degree will be an associate's in engineering, drafting, and design, and after this program, I will be graduated. And I'm currently uh, under a uh, D.W. Gates uh, engineering firm in Tulsa, downtown. Good old to meet you. So apparently earlier I forgot to mention that I am currently interning at the Boys and Girls Club of Adair County in Stillwell. Yes, you have permission to remove your mask. <laughs> My name is Lila Sherman. I'm 19 years old. I'm from District 10. 
I graduated from J. Oklahoma. I am currently interning at the OSU Extension Office in Delaware County. Um, I'm going to college at NSU where I plan to transfer to OSU eventually and get my degree in podiatry. Thank you. Sio Nagata, Tori Snell Dawadoa, Tahlequah Janela. Um, hi guys, my name is Tori Snell. I'm originally from Tahlequah, but I graduated from Little Kansas, go Comets. I'm going to be a senior this year at NSU where I will get my bachelor's degree in elementary ed, but I'm going to follow up with that as in a master's for um, administration. I'm currently at the golf course for my internship, and I just thank you for letting me come out here today. Never spoken in a room full of this many people. I'm nervous. <laughs> um, OCO, Nagad, Charlotte Knott, Domado. Uh, my name's Charlotte Knott. I'm 18. I uh, am from Houston, Texas. I live in Tahlequah, uh, District 2, and I go to school at Wellesley College in Boston. Um, um, I work site, right. Uh, in, I'm interning at the Cherokee Nation Home Health Services mm -hmm. in Tahlequah. Thank you. Uh, OCO, uh, Chaz Doado, Still Janela. I'm Chaz McLean. I'm from Stowell. I graduated from Stowell High School. I go to college at Carl Albert. Um, I'm planning to be my, have my associates in allied health and go to NSU to finish my um, biology degree with a minor in nutrition, and I plan to be a physical therapist. I'm from District 7, and I work at the outpatient clinic down in, Ch and, um, I work at the Cherokee Nation outpatient clinic. Sio Tohichu, Elias Dawado, uh, Claremore Janela, Yawade Tioda, oh, Janela, or no, sorry, I'm so sorry. Nela Du, Yawade Tioda, my name's Elias Shano, I'm from Claremore, Oklahoma, I'm 18 years old, sorry that I just botched all that in Cherokee, but uh, uh, I'm going to Rogers State University to study business entrepreneurship. Hopefully start my own business someday. I'm from just District 14, and I'm uh, currently cleaning pools in Owasso near Claremore, and that's my work site right now. But it's been a blast. Thank you guys for letting us come out here. Actually, you did okay in your language. Sio, <laughs> Tahiju, Evan Dawado, Fort Gibson, Janela. My name is Evan Michael. I'm from Fort Gibson. Uh, I'm currently going to be a senior at NSU. I'm getting my degree in nutritional sciences, and I plan to go to physical therapy school at OU after that. I'm 21 years old, and my job site is at the new clinic here in Tahlequah in the physical therapy portion. Thank you, guys. Sioni God, Yona Dawadon, Ethan Yonega, Oklahoma Skadugi, Juna de Laguasti, Juna de Laguaa, Talsgo Yodetiad, Daligua, Alatasa. Hi, my name is Ethan Wynn. I attend Oklahoma State University where I'm a major in multimedia journalism and minor in philosophy. I'm currently placed at um, Camp Seven Star towards uh, Lake Tent Killer where, I, where I'm a camp counselor and I maintenance the place. I kind of do a little bit of everything there and I run the media stuff as there, there as well. And I am 20 years old from Tahlequah, Oklahoma. What do? Well, as you can see, you can tell they're talented. And uh, again, these guys were selected from amongst a panel. And uh, Councilman Leg, you know the situation. You've been with me. And uh, uh, we're pl proud to have these guys on our internship program. I think they'll do wonders. Uh, great for the resume. And uh, hopefully, eventually, one day, uh, these young men, young men and women will be working for us, and that's mm -hmm. what we're hoping to do. So 
with that, I appreciate your time again. And do you have any questions? George, if they would <clears throat> all come back in with their mask, we would show our appreciation. You bet. You bet. <clears throat> you know, every year, Mr. Roach brings in interns, and it seems like every year the quality of the interns that we receive that uh, that reflects what the future of our Cherokee Nation is going to be just gets getting better. You guys are really just raising the bar on what the expectations would be to be an intern. So, George, you and your selection staff are to be committed. I mean, from what I heard, I was just <clears throat> talking to Councilor Shambaugh and Councilor Duncan about the quality that we have before us here. Uh, we got high expectations of this group here, so we really appreciate, you know, what, what they're doing and what they're going to be. Anybody else? Speaker, thank you, Council. Again, thank you. And if that's it, I guess we'll sit back and watch you guys, your business, and we'll head out. Thank if you, you again. If you need anything, come back to us. You bet you. We appreciate you. Okay. Thanks. All right. <clears throat> well, old business, none. New business, uh, resolution number one, Dora Paskowski. Would you please take that one? of the Cherokee Nation in connection with the use of Rank One Sports website. And I put that in the form of a motion. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Councilor Deer, number two. This is an act amending Title 12 of the Cherokee Nation Code annotated establishing the Anti-Harassment Act of 2021 and declaring an emergency. I put that in the form of a motion. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? I had a, one discussion later on. Just was going to clarify my vote before I cast the vote on it. Okay. Um, Apologize, I, Councilor, no problem. Yeah, I, just the uh, last m month, whenever this came forward, I already kind of clarified some things that I thought I had problems with when the way it was written. Um, we have two different laws that already cover domestic violence. Um, and it kind of be redundant, this part, except for the part in which it opens up to could be used wrongfully against individuals by violating some of their constitutional rights. Um, you know, I went and spoke to more attorneys since then, um, and I continue to stand to where I stand at now. I hope everyone did reach out to some attorneys because it's important on how the law is verbiaged and what it means coming out of it. So that's what I was willing to say prior to the vote. Okay. Yes, Councillor Duncan. I actually have a few questions too. I was written down just because of uh, all the talk going on about it to Sarah Hill, if that's okay. General, I, I um, you know, there's been some stuff going around social media and this and that about all of this. Um, so I, I thought I thought you did a pretty good job of, um, very good job actually of um, simplifying what this law was last month, but. Uh, there continues to be some misinformation it seems like out there that is frankly scaring constituents about their their rights so i just wrote down some simple questions um that i'd like you to answer um start starting with the second amendment is this a red flag law this is not a red flag law um there are states that have red flag laws where if someone um let's say for instance you had a child who was threatening to commit suicide, an adult child, and you, you could go and you could do a private action and have guns removed from them uh, because they were a danger. Um, that's a red flag law. Oklahoma doesn't have red, flaw, red flag laws, and this is not a red flag law uh, because it doesn't give any private right of action but keeps, the, keeps it in the courts, and it really has to do with threats of violence um, or threats made against individuals. So I don't think it's a red flag law. Okay, so that's part of my next question is, um, will lawful gun owners have their guns taken away? No, sir. And, and in fact, uh, 
there's no authority to take guns away from lawful gun owners. Thank you. That sounds a little silly to ask, but I have to ask it. Um, and this law is on base with um, with the state of Oklahoma's law concerning this, this matter, right? That's correct. There are um, civil protective order laws. This is a routine part of civil protective order laws in the state. It was a part of the civil protective order law passed in 2005. Um, as Councilman Nofire noted, you know, this is, um, it, it could be seen as redundant. I consider it an extension of, of an important law and an important protection out of, out of the domestic violence context. And sometimes there are situations that arise and, and do arise where um, there are people that aren't in a dating relationship and who aren't family who face threats of violence from other people. And so it, exp it expands and I think a necessary and useful way some of those protections. Okay, so the next part of that, there's been said that um, Cherokee Nation is trying to take your free speech away. So concerning the First Amendment, if someone out there spread false information, use fear-mongering, for lack of a better term, um, there's nothing CN Cherokee Nation can do to stop them, correct? I mean, that's, that's right. I mean, the, the First Amendment has limitations, like all the amendments do. You know, you can't, the classic example is you can't start a panic in a crowded theater by yelling fire when there's no fire because people get trampled and people get hurt. And that's a classic law school example that they always use. So there are limitations to free speech. You can't, I can't threaten your life, Councilman. I can tell you that I don't like you, I don't like the look of you, I don't, whatever I want to say about you in this form or in any other, and um, that's that's just uh, people being nice or not nice to one another, and that's all protected by the First Amendment. And in fact, we we could not do anything that would violate that. And the and the the act itself is very clear. In several points, it says nothing in this act um, would consider First Amendment protected speech a violation. So there are there are protections built into the act. Okay, so someone can go on social media, say whatever they want about whatever they want, as long as it's not criminal, they can still do that, correct? That's right. They can, they can call okay, me whatever so, unpleasant names they wish on whatever social media platform they prefer. Okay. And it's pretty simple. And like you said, uh, you actually beat me to it. Uh, I uh, went through it again today and in several places. Does not include constitutionally protected free speech. Uh, constitutionally protected ac activity is not included within the meaning of course of conduct. Um, Another, another part, it talks about the court granting ex parte temporary harassment protection, um, but it says it shall not prohibit the respondent from exercising constitutionally protected free speech. Most importantly, in the back, it has its own section for constitutional rights, and it says nothing in this chapter shall be construed to infringe upon any constitutionally protected rights, including, but not limited to, freedom of speech and freedom of assembly. Um, I just wanted to point that out because there's so much false information being spread out there. Um, I don't know if it's for political reasons or what it is, but it's, it's, it's aggravating when you see your citizens um, being frightened or scared about their rights being taken away, and there's no legitimacy to it. Um, so I just wanted to ask those very simple questions and point this out that's within this law. I appreciate you answering them. I'm happy to be here, Councilman. Term. Okay. I just was want to ask AG a question Go about ahead. it since she was up there clarifying it. Um, you said you weren't going to take away anyone's firearms or guns. On section, my bad, it's part seven of section 1505. It says, in issuing the order, the court shall order the respondent to surrender and prohibit the respondent from possessing all firearms and any dangerous weapons. What does that define? That is talking about an, a, if there is an order issued and the court makes a determination that, the, that there has been some sort of harassment and it, go, and it defines in here the sorts of things, credible threats of violence are defined, unlawful harassment. And so if the court is persuaded that there is um, such a threat to a person's life um, that they are in, in danger then, then yes they can't the court can't order that weapons be removed and that's similar to the civil protective order that was passed in 2005 which contains you know very similar language that permits the court to order um, that weapons be removed from the house of someone who's making threats and it says in the civil protective order um, requiring the respondent to surrender for safekeeping any firearm or other specified dangerous weapon in the respondent's immediate possession or control um, and, and that has to do, and that's because there's being a, a 
protective order issued against them because they represent, in the judge's, in the judge's mind, a threat to an individual. So that's, that's similar to the law, the civil protective law that we already have, and it's similar to state laws um, that also govern these type, this type of illegal conduct. So a simple answer is yes, you can remove firearms. The other question was the ex parte. What's ex parte mean? Ex parte means with only one side of the story being told to the judge. So the judge can order an ex parte and then, like you said, remove guns. Now, on the one of the definitions here as being defined as harassment, it says credible threat of violence or a knowing and willful course of conduct directed at a specific person which seriously alarms annoys or harasses. Now when I asked you that as an example last time you brought up a public official as a giving an example, could you give another example of what might annoy or alarm someone um, to order ex parte and remove their guns? Sure. Actually I have a, a actual real life example that came about in the last two weeks. But first of all I wanted to read from section 1505 which talks about ex parte orders because ex parte orders typically are not favored. The court doesn't grant them except in except, exceptional circumstances. And section 1505 says, upon filing a petition for civil anti-harassment protection order under this chapter, the petitioner may obtain an ex parte temporary anti-harassment protection order. An ex parte temporary anti-harassment protect protection order may be granted with or without notice upon the filing of an affidavit which, to the satisfaction of the court, shows reasonable proof of unlawful harassment of the petitioner by the respondent and that great or irreparable harm will result to the petitioner if the temporary anti-harassment protection order is not granted. So it's talking about proving great or irreparable harm. And the, the circumstance I'm going to bring up is one that, was, that came out of Sequoia County. I got a phone call from local police who said there was a woman who had been talking to this person on Snapchat. She did not realize that he lived in her building. Um, he said, hey, I actually just live a couple doors down from you. I'd like to meet up. Um, she sees this gentleman in the hallway. She feels very uncomfortable. She tells him, she deletes him. She says, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Leave me alone. Um, she finds him out lurking outside of her hallway. She finds him across the street looking at her house, taking pictures of her house. She finds out he has felonies um, in, other, in another state and has a warrant out for his arrest in another state. And she goes to local law enforcement and says, I'm scared of this guy. He lives in my building, and I don't know what to do. They've never been in a dating relationship. They are strangers to one another. That would be the kind of case where she might need to come and say, hey, this person's been... Uh, making he's been threatening to send all of my snaps to all of the family members across town he's been watching my house he's been watching me with binoculars i'm concerned that's the kind of circumstance maybe or maybe not that they, the judge would be persuaded that guns should be removed but it's the kind of circumstance where an anti-harassment law is a pretty handy thing to have okay that wouldn't that fall under a stalking law don't we already have a law in our in codes for stalking well, we do, we do have stalking laws, um, but typically they, they involve people who are in a dating relationship. They typically don't um, talk about strangers. Okay, they typically don't talk about strangers, but we have, we have the stalking law that would apply underneath it because you were, I guess, did you already, did we order something in that, in that issue? Did we, did we, that was a call that you said you knew about it. Was that one of our calls that we had that come through our marshal service or is that one of the states or... That was a phone call we received from the county, and fortunately for the young woman, the person had a warrant out from another state, um, and the person was um, decided that rather than face the consequences of his actions, he would flee. So we haven't, so, he hasn't been back to bother her. So we could have used the stalking law on that one to help protect her. So, so no, I guess the I, thing I is that, 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 that we, we already have other laws that cover this. Um, and then just to bring, bring, bring back the point you already said, you can take people's guns, and then, of course, we have the ex parte, which ex parte means that you don't have to have any, uh, the person who's being petitioned doesn't have to have knowledge of it. They don't have to have the court let you know. So that's all I was just trying to get to and clarify on that, and appreciate it, Speaker. <coughs> Thank you. Thank Say you, Mr. Speaker. We did take a vote on that, right? Okay. Okay. All right. Let's clarify that vote then. Yes, Councillor Critton. I'd just like to be added as a sponsor on this. Okay. 
Okay, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Number three, uh, Councillor Legg, you want to take that? A motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Number four, uh, Councillor E.O., you want to take that? Yes, it's an act amending Title 22 of the Cherokee Nation Code, annotated and declaring an emergency with that in the form of a motion. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Hmm. Councillor Duncan, you want to take number five? This is an act amending Title 47 of the Cherokee Nation Code annotated and declaring emergency. I put that in the form of a motion. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed? Councillor Shambaugh, you want to take number six? This is a legislative act amending Title 62 of the Cherokee Nation Code annotated public finance and declaring emergency, and I put that in the form of a motion. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Yes, Councillor Deer. Okay. Anybody else want to be added sponsor? Councillor Vasquez. Okay. All in favor? Signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Councillor Dobbins, you want to take number seven? Declaring an emergency. Put that in the form of a motion. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, Councilor Deer. Okay. Anybody else? Councilor Vasquez, Councilor Dobbins, Councilor EO here. All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed. Item number eight, uh, Councilor Taylor, you want to take that? Sure. This is an act amending Legislative Act 16-20, authorizing the comprehensive capital budget for fiscal year 2021, Mod 5, and declaring an emergency. I put that in the form of a motion. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Com coming out of our Community Service Committee, number one, Councillor Jordan, you want to take that? Yes. This is resolution to... Uh, approving and authorizing the submission of the Indian Housing Plan to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for the 2021 <coughs> Indian Housing Block Grant, the American Rescue Plan, IHBG, ARP funding. And I put that in the form of a motion. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Anybody else want to be added to a sponsor there? Got yes. Dora, Jordan, Crittenden, Austin, Duncan, everybody. Yeah. Okay, number 10. Uh, Councilor Coach, you want to take that? Did we vote? No. Okay, back up, back up. Okay, item number 9, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? I'm getting in a hurry this evening, I don't know why. Number 10, Councilor Coates. Submission of the fiscal year 2022 Indian Housing Plan to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, and I move for its approval. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Sponsors? Austin? Everybody? All in favor? Signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? To my right here, you got any announcements? Councilor? I was just going to mention uh, we lost uh, Cherokee Nation Trash National Treasure Catherine Kelly just last Sunday. Oh, my. She passed away. Okay. Anybody else over here? Yes, Councilor Taylor. Um, I just want to give a shout out to Olivia Rains, a former tribal youth council, was on the OU women's softball team. That Yay. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yes, Councilor Coates. Uh, I'd like to um, remember uh, John Thornton, who is a member of our organization, uh, the Cherokees of Central Florida, who passed from COVID earlier this year as well. And, um, and I'd like to remember my father, Glenn Coates, who passed uh, recently as well. And I appreciate the 
well wishes and the kindness of everyone here and the plant that you sent. Mm -hmm. And I just want to thank everybody. Thank okay. you. Anybody else? Yes, Councilor Shembo. I'd just like to say congratulations to council members who won the re-election bids. It's been an honor to serve with you, and I'm honored to be to serve another four years with you. Okay. To my left, Councilor Austin, anything? Crittenden, Baker Shaw, Joe Deere, Leg, no fire. Um, I'd like to just make an announcement. We, uh, I just got a call yesterday. We lost one of our speakers. She was my great aunt, uh, Odie Dick from uh, NICUT. So uh, for, if you would, let's go and have a, a moment of silence for all the people we've lost in the past 30 days or month. Okay, with that, I uh, need a motion to adjourn. <laughs>